Hey everyone, thank you for joining my presentation on how to bootstrap Terraform secrets using the 1Password CLI. You probably already know about how 1Password can be used as your day-to-day -day password manager, but 1Password has also created developer tools that work to secure your development workflows. But before we move any further, let me introduce myself. My name is Jillian Morgan, and I'm a technical lead on the developer ecosystems team at 1Password. My team focuses on building tools that expand how 1Password can be used by developers, if any of you would like to get in touch with me after this presentation, my contact details are just on this slide. Uh, so for today's agenda, I'll give a quick overview of what Terraform is. I'll then talk about what problems you may run into regarding credentials needed by Terraform. And then I'll talk about how these problems can be solved using the 1Password CLI. And then lastly, I'll give a demo of my, pro of my proposed solution. So first I'd like to quickly go over what Terraform is for those who are new to the tool. Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool. So like the name implies, infrastructure as code refers to the managing of your infrastructure through code rather than a manual process. So Terraform allows you to describe your complete infrastructure in the form of code with the use of configuration files. The files define the resources for our infrastructure. So Terraform parses the code in these defined files and translates it into an API call, which is made to the resource provider in order to create and manage the desired resources. The Terraform files can be pushed up into source code where team members can then collaborate and review. Uh, and what's great about this is that these Terraform configuration files uh, can be reused to speed up deployment of infrastructure resources and it ensures a consistent workflow across environments. So of course, when configuring infrastructure, you need a base set of credentials to access said infrastructure. But if we're making changes using our local machine, how can we get these credentials locally? Currently, most people use environment files with plain text passwords inside. But imagine this scenario. You've created a plain text environment file in order to make changes to your infrastructure using Terraform. And once done with your Terraform changes, you commit all files to source control. But oops, your git ignore was not configured to ignore your environment file filled with all these plain text secrets, and now they've been leaked to your repo. Now you have to spend your whole day re-rolling your credentials and potentially dealing with some unhappy team members. Now, another scenario I'd like you to imagine, you're making some changes to your infrastructure uh, using Terraform. You go to apply the changes, but they fail. You talk with some of your, your coworkers and they tell you that everything works for them on their machine. Typical, right? After some investigation, you learn the credentials to access your resources have changed. And because you and your coworkers are working from multiple sources of truth using these plain text passwords, environments are not consistent and you must manually update secrets when the change is made. That is, even if you're aware the change is made. So how do we solve this? So the root of the problem in the scenarios we just discussed is that we're storing sensitive values on our machines. So let's remove them. With 1Password, we can store these credentials remotely and replace these secret values in our environment configuration with reference to where these secrets are stored in 1Password. The 1Password command line tool can then be used to load these secrets directly from 1Password into where we need them. So I'll quickly just show you what that looks like in code. Um, in our environment file, instead of writing out our plain text credentials, we can replace it with a reference to where these secrets uh, can be found in 1Password. So in my example here, I prepend the reference with op colon slash slash so that the 1Password CLI knows what content to replace. Uh, development is the 1Password vault I want to access, and then the word database is the item I want to access. And then username and password are the fields I would like to assign to db user and db password uh, variables respectively. So now that we've removed the secret values from our code, we can safely check in our environment file into source control so that everyone on our team can use the same credentials without risking this sensitive data. So that means no more worrying about whether or not you've added your environment files to get ignore. In fact, when using secret references, you should push up your environment files. And this is because with 1Password, we can share access to credentials with other members of our team. Um, so anyone with access can use the same secret references to access the linked credentials. And then any changes made to these credentials will be made immediately available to everyone on your team, rather than manually updating secrets across all these different development environments. Um, so when your teammate makes a change to the code base that requires a configuration update, they commit the required config changes in the environment, fi in the environment file together with the code changes. 
These references can then be reviewed to make sure the correct secrets are being requested. Uh, once approved and merged, all a developer needs to do is pull down these changes, and then they're good to go. So all the configuration is synchronized through source control, and you never have a broken environment due to incorrect creds again. So this ensures that the configuration is reproducible and complete, eliminating those, well, it worked on my machine uh, comments. So this can greatly accelerate onboarding as well, uh, as when new people join your team, they no longer need to spend all this time configuring their local environment in order to get started working. Uh, instead, their, their manager can just uh, give them access to the credentials that are needed for the project. And because we can now check our environment files into source code, developers can get the project up and running right away with no time spent determining what and where are the proper credentials. Um, so since we are at HashiTalks, you're probably wondering why not use Vault for this? Um, Vault uses secret references as well, uh, but we have a bit of a chicken and the egg problem here. Uh, where do we store the credentials we need to access Vault? And furthermore, we already know about the benefits of writing infrastructure as code, so shouldn't we be configuring Vault using Terraform as well? So I'm going to go ahead now and give you all a demo of how this will work in practice. Uh, so let me just switch over to my desktop here. Um, so for this demo, I'm going to use Terraform to create a simple VPC network uh, resource on my GCP project. I've already gone ahead and created uh, a Terraform file, configuration file for this year, but of course I'll need to include credentials in order to access GCP. So for supplying GCP credentials to Terraform, you can use an environment file that includes a variable for Google credentials. Uh, so normally in an environment, you might set the variables here as plain text credentials. Well, that's what I have right now. Uh, but we can actually use one password secret references here. So in one password, I've already gone ahead and created a vault for my developer team uh, that will need to access these credentials. So I have one here named devs. Uh, and then within this vault, I've created a one password item that holds my GCP credentials. So we have this item called GCP. And within that, we have a field called credentials. Um, so for my reference, first I need to uh, see, need to make a marker here so that one password CLI knows which variables to fetch. So as re, as uh, mentioned earlier in this presentation, that was op colon slash slash slash. Um, next, we need to specify the vault we want to access, which is devs, then the item we want to access, which is GCP, and then the field we want to uh, switch in here, which would be credentials. So I'll save that there. Um, but as a side note, 1Password also has a VS Code extension that can automatically move your existing plain text secrets into 1Password and then replace the text with a reference that can be accessed later. I'd recommend you checking that feature out if you have the time, but uh, for now, we'll just uh, type it in manually. Um, so now that my secret reference is set up, I can start running some commands in Terraform. Uh, so to have the secret references updated, we can prepend our Terraform command with op run. So let me just uh, show you what that looks like. Um, and then the environment variable we want, or sorry, the environment variable file we want to use, which is just .env here. And then the one, uh, and then one password will also ask us to just give us the command we want to use uh, op run on, which is just going to be our Terraform apply command. Uh, so let me just run that. And you'll see here uh, one password is just asking for Touch ID to authorize access to fetching these credentials. So I'll just give a little, little touch there. Um, we'll just say yes to get that going. Uh, you could also alias this command so that the op run command starts every time you just type in terraform apply rather than uh, typing op run and handing in the environment variable. Um, so now that we've run terraform apply, if we go back to our file, uh, we can see that the environment file itself was never updated. So uh, you can see this is still the secret reference here. Um, we'll just go back. Um, so with this new workflow, the environment file on our, your system never has the plain text secrets. Instead, the one password CLI passes the secrets to just the process running on your application, and the secrets are only kept in memory and, ne and never written to disk. So that adds to the security of this workflow. Um, so if we see, if we look here, we can see that Terraform applied the changes using the secret references. Um, so let's just go back to our presentation slide. 
So because there is such a hassle to rotate credentials and synchronize them across environments, developers would avoid rotating secrets in the past. And this new way of collaborating on the environment configuration removes the manual steps required to synchronize these changes. So now we can rotate credentials as many times as we'd like without interrupting the developers working with them. This is especially important to do for development workflows that connect to production infrastructure, which tend to be a little more sensitive. Um, so now I'd just like to thank you all for coming to my presentation. Um, if you have any interest in learning more about the one password CLI and what other capabilities it can offer to help you with your development workflows, please take a, li take a look at the first link. Um, but if you want to learn more about other development tools that one password offers, uh, take a look at that second link there. Um, and lastly, if you have any questions about what was shown in the presentation today or any of our other developer tools, feel free to join our Slack workspace. I've included the link on this slide. Uh, you may want to take a screenshot because it's a bit long and I don't expect you to remember all that. Um, but I'd like to thank you all again and enjoy the rest of HashiTalks.